everybody, this is Philip Martin, and this is on film, on video, for April 22nd, um, 2022. I still have, I still struggle with 2022 as a real date, but um, there you go. I used to, well, for, for a very brief period, I taught uh, in college. I, I, I taught a I taught at uh, a local university and I was teaching a class that wasn't exactly in it was a, 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 a class about history uh, politics and film and um, one of my problems I had with that class and I it's a problem I don't have with uh, the other classes I do which consist my students consist of basically retired people um, older folks people my age and older who you know uh, I don't have this problem with them but the problem I had with the younger you know, college age people was that they didn't have any interest at all in any movie that was older than they were anything that was from a year before they were born was just anything that was old, more than a couple of years old I mean uh, movies that had subtitles, movies that were in black and white, but most of all, movies that weren't, you know, new movies, that weren't current movies. And I've struggled with that. I don't know why it is. I think that uh, part of it is that we have, um, I, I don't think we're as um, culturally literate as we used to be. And one of the reasons is the failure of newspapers. I mean, uh, since well the past 20 years we've just seen this um, wholesale uh, slaughter <laughs> of movie critics and book reviewers and theater critics and music critics you know it, it in the nation's newspapers we it used to be common that every newspaper that had more than four or five people on staff would have you know a critic, uh, somebody who wrote about the arts in a way that was beyond the, you know, uh, calendar sort of listings and and um, reported stories about what was happening, when and where, um, that got more into the how and why of things. Uh, and we don't really have that anymore. We're fortunate here in Arkansas, or maybe, you know, I mean, it's a sort of self-aggrandizing uh, notion to say that we're fortunate. I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate to work for a newspaper still values that sort of writing and reporting. I have a job and I get to do it. And as a result, I think that uh, we're better off for it. I think that the Democrat Gazette is a much better product than a lot of newspapers of, um, well, of similar size and portent, though. Uh, I, I think we do a lot better in a lot of areas, but you know we can leave that for some other time. Um, anyway, I came across this really, really well reasoned, really nice um, essay by Stephen Witte, uh, who used to be the um, movie critic for the New uh, New York Daily News. I think he held that position up until around 2018 or so, and now he's writing for a variety of different places, and I, I think he's doing pretty well. We ran a piece on his a couple of years ago, and I might even uh, inquire to see if I can run this piece uh, next week, or maybe the week after. I don't know. I may have to pay for it. If I have to pay for it, well, that's always a problem, you know, because we only have a limited budget. But I don't want to steal a piece. I want you to go to New NewJerseyArts.net and look at it. It's Stephen Witte, and it's uh, the headline, the web headline, is all opportunities to see old movies fade, so does basic cinematic literacy. And in this piece, Mr. Witte starts out by talking about, he saw a poll on um, one of those listicles, uh, you know, one of those stories that run on websites, and he's not giving you the website, uh, and I'm not giving you the website either, because I don't know it, for one, but I, I've seen this uh, phenomenon again and again and he's talking about how this was about the 50 best romantic comedies in movie history 49 of the ones on the list had been released since 1980 and the one outlier was Harold and Maude which was released 
in 1971. So, basically, if you think of movie history as beginning maybe in 1895, you know, uh, you've got 76, 75 years that is just totally, you know, ignored in this. And you've only got like one film from the 1970s in this list. I mean, what happened to Annie Hall? I mean, okay. Uh, everybody can have a list. Everybody can have their own list. And what you, it's always true when you tell a writer that you don't understand what they're trying to get at. Almost always, unless you're being disingenuous. You, genu you know what your favorite movies are. You know whether you like something or you don't like something. If you make a list, it's perfectly valid. The problem is this list suggests that these people didn't know about all this history. I have a little bit of a problem with this with some of my some of my critics who I wish they had seen more and I mean you can't see everything I have big gaps in my education I I am not very well versed on uh, silent film I, I mean I've seen a lot of silent film probably more than you but I haven't seen enough silent film to really hold myself out as somebody who knows about it uh, I am not a huge expert on the screwball comedies of the 30s I know a little bit about them I know there, there are blind spots. World cinema, you know, none of us are going to know everything. But I think it's important that we know a little bit about stuff. I think that that's um, one of the one of the few prerequisites of being like a movie critic is knowing about the movies a little bit. All right, I mean, and so you have to literally know a little about this. Now, it's not a prerequisite for you as a viewer you can watch whatever you want and you can like whatever you want and you can dislike whatever you want that's fine but you know I always think our enjoyment is increased by knowing stuff by knowing more stuff by knowing more stuff about stuff by knowing that the North uh, the Northman the Robert Eggers film that's opening this week uh, is inspired by the same story that inspired Hamlet, that adds something to what we get out of it, you know? Uh, it's just part of it. Um, I'm going to go back to Witty now, because he says this really well. Uh, and, you know, it's sort of like uh, the idea of old movies. And he quotes Peter Bogdanovich, the late director and journalist, and sometimes actor, he said, there are no old movies. There are only movies you haven't seen yet. And that's really kind of the way you need to look at it. Because we always encounter things at different points of our lives. I mean, it's sort of like somebody today is probably watching Bonnie and Clyde or Natural Born Killers or um, Rules of the Game for the very first time. And that's one of the things I stress when I'm showing films to to audiences that you know this is a new film to you these ideas may not be something you've ever considered before this is something that you should give a chance to work on you and let it work on you or not I mean I think the perfect approach to take to a film is to go in with very little expectations and a sort of willingness to give yourself over to whatever the movie is trying to do. I think you have to allow it to um, work whatever charm it has. If it doesn't have any charm, it doesn't have any charm, but you have to be predisposed to these fresh avenues of delight, okay? Anyway, um, and, and, and Stephen goes on, he talks about, you know, the, the idea that 
you know, things are old and the this sort of inherent, um, you know, prejudice is built into that. It's sort of a kind of ageism, you know, and it's, which is annoying, you know, because, you know, um, even though uh, ageism in sports maybe makes sense because, you know, you're, you're <laughs> at some point Father Time does catch up and Father Time is undefeated and all that. And even people like Tom Brady will eventually see their skills decrease to the point that they cannot perform anymore. Intellectually, I'm not sure that that occurs. I'm not sure that artists get um, worse as they grow older. Maybe at some point some of them do, maybe some of them don't. Uh, And it certainly doesn't apply to a work of art that is basically ageless. That's the point. You know, um, we venerate some things, some old works of art, you know, like um, Ulysses, Finnegan's Wake, what am I on, James Joyce, uh, (laughs) kick here. Um, and And I think that, you know, we're always or some of us are always more inclined to the new, the fresh, the brilliant. I mean, there are people that don't want to listen to old music, though most people I know do listen to a lot of old music. And some of the music that we're listening to now regularly is 50 and 60 and 70 years old. Whereas, um, which is kind of unique. It's like recorded music and films are just about, I mean, they, they, they started about the same time. You know, caught on about the same time, and they've been around about the same amount of time. Uh, we don't listen, most of us don't listen to a lot of music from before, say, 1940, you know, and I guess we don't watch a lot of movies before 1940 either. I mean, I would kind of, but that doesn't mean you can't be surprised and wonder at these films. And if I was going to create a list of the top albums of all time, I wouldn't probably, I would probably be, well, I would be probably be, 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 my recency bias would be negative. I would like probably anything out of the last 20 years, I would be suspicious about wanting to include on a list of all time classics just because I want them to, to hang around a while to gain whatever they might gain or, or go away or fade from your, you know, your frame of reference. I mean, there's some things that came out interesting, and I need to I, I need to address this in a uh, personal. I just had somebody write me not very long ago about um, the um, oh, what was the movie? Okay, now the movie I'm just blanking on. <laughs> oh God, it is just uh, he he wrote me about a movie that was really popular around the turn of the century, around 1999-2000. And he said that uh, my review of it, which was, I didn't really remember, which was sort of lukewarm. It was sort of like, well, we've seen this before. And he was outraged at the time and said, no, we hadn't seen this before. You've never known this. You know, and he wanted, and he may have written me, I don't know, or he may have just said all this stuff in his head. And now 20 years later, he wrote me to say, you know, I was thinking about that the other day and you, you were right. And that's no credit to me, except maybe I had been around longer than he had and I'd seen more things and experience more movies than he had and can kind of see where it fits into you know our timeline and the Blair Witch Project that's what it was and the Blair Witch Project does not have the same uh, run today as it did then it doesn't feel like you know something like the Godfather feels or like even Goodfellows or uh, it doesn't feel like a classic film it feels like a film that was of its time, that was very much of the period it was released in, and that's okay. That's all anybody really can hope for when they're releasing a movie, when they're making a movie, is that you actually connect with your audience in the area that you were trying to connect with your audience, which is the the, in the here and now, okay? You want to connect in the here and now. Now, if it gains... um, 
weight and gravitas over the years, well, that's that's great. That's something else. But um, you can't expect that. Anyway, anyway, so Blair Witch Project is, you know, it's like, I mean, some people might put it on a list of scary films. I, I wouldn't personally. Uh, but, you know, depending on your taste and depending on what you like, there's nothing wrong with liking or disliking any particular thing. I am just all about gaining some uh, perspective on these things by a wide variety of experience, by, you know, ex exposing yourself to stuff like that. Witty has a really good point here, and I'm going to quote this uh, directly. He says, it's a problem that stems not from lack of access to media, but from too much. When I was growing up in the 60s and 70s, our TV options consisted of channels 2, 4, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13. Aside, he's living in New Jersey. He's got a lot more options than I did. Seven choices. Probably had four for most of my childhood. Okay, back to him. But the thing was, every one of them programmed movies every day. There was no cable then. Never mind video or DVDs. Most of these were older movies from decades past, and they were simply part of the program, seamlessly integrated with the new. You just grew up accepting them. That's exactly right. That's exactly the way... I, that's why I don't know, and I've written about this, and, I've, and I've, I've talked about it, I don't really know exactly when I first saw Bonnie and Clyde. I have this false memory of seeing it at a theater at a matinee that can't not possibly be true. But I was conversant with the film by 1970, by the time I was 12 years old, I knew all about Bonnie and Clyde. I had seen it, and I'd probably seen it on TV, and I'd probably seen an expurgated version of it. I'd probably seen it, I mean, I'd, but I knew what it was, and I had it, you know. Uh, and today, we have all these a la carte choices. It's buffet style, and you only get to pick what you get to pick. Nobody forces you. You're not, you don't have to sit there and wade through a movie. You can always change to something you want all the time. So you get more and more selective and you get more and more siloed. If all you want to watch is anime, that's all you have to watch. If all you want to watch is sports, like some friends of mine, that's all you have to do is watch sports. If you are a fan of prestige, you know, serial dramas, you can spend your whole life locked into that mode. And that's not good for you as a person. It's certainly not good for us as a society, you know. Ugh. And I don't, you know, sort of like I have a lot of streaming subscriptions. I have, um, and you know, I have Criterion Channel. I have uh, Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Apple TV Plus, uh, Sundance, uh, Acorn, uh, probably a couple others in there. Um, I never have to worry about there not being something on that I'm anxious to see. But the problem is as we have more and more choice, we're losing this reservoir of common experience, this reservoir of common images and ideas that if everybody sat down and watched, you know, um, Gone with the Wind, for instance, we would know all these things. And we may know a lot of movies that we haven't seen because we've seen, we've read about them, we've seen trailers, we've seen them referred to, to and other TV shows and things like that. And sometimes you'll have the sense where you've seen a film, but you really haven't seen it. And I get the experience sometimes of actually watching a movie, then realizing that, uh, you know, for like a half hour in, that yes, I've seen it, <laughs> and I probably wrote about it. For instance, um, Karen, uh, we're going tonight to the... Um, into the woods performance out at uh, oh, uh, Wildwood, and um, to 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 uh, refresh yourself of 
on that production because she's writing a review. Um, we we watched the Disney uh, Into the Woods, the uh, one from 2014, the uh, movie, and uh, I know Karen's seen it because I'd seen it. Only when we started watching it, I realized that what we did the last time was we only watched like 15, 20, 30 minutes of it because, and this was kind of how you do it during award season and you're trying to fill out a ballot, is that we only were watching to see if it was something we'd be interested in as a possible awards film and um, to, to vote. And I got 15, 20 minutes in. I said, no, I don't think, I, I like this fine, uh, but it's not speaking to me in a such a way that I want I don't know if you saw the lightning, but uh, we got the thunder. Um, so, we're watching Into the Woods now because we'd never watched the whole thing <laughs> in preparation for the for seeing the show tonight. So anyway, the play tonight, the musical tonight. Anyway, so, uh, I'm going to try, like I said, I'm going to try to get Stephen Whitty's um, whole essay and run it next week. But if I don't, well, I didn't. I wasn't able to, to negotiate it. But that's all I really want to say this week. And um, hope that you, um, you know, one other thing that bothers me, and I'm going to just bring this up, is that uh, these videos don't get as much play as they should. And I don't know exactly why. Because, you know, we put them in the usual places. And maybe a lot of people watch them on the iPad. I don't know. But if you really like this, you know, please you know, thumb it up or, or do something because we're getting a lot of no responses to that. And I think that's usually because, you know, people go, yeah, all right, fine. You know, it's, it's, not a, a, it's not a sign that they hate us. It's a sign that, uh, yeah, we're doing all right. So anyway, if we're doing all right, let us know. If we're not doing all right, just shut up. Okay, we'll see you next week. Take care.